everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to work with paint effects. Now, paint effects can be opened with this orange tool here or this shelf icon. Once you press on it, this window will open up. This window is nothing else than an abstraction, so to speak, of Maya's vertex color painting tool. So as you can see here, the other values that I click on, you're going to see things changing here. Now, while I recommend you to mostly work with these tools, nothing really stops you from using the Maya tools as well. Just remember that these tools automatically change between different vertex color sets and these don't. So most of the time do fine with just using the paint effects tool. Now this scene here already has some paint effects applied on it, but let me just explain how this briefly works, this UI here. So it's made to be very simple and intuitive. The brush that you click is the brush or the effect that you're gonna paint. So for example, right now we're painting accumulation. If I were to paint dilution, I can just tick, toggle it here and dilute the color. This can also be controlled through this slider here. As you can see, this automatically changes between accumulation and dilution or you can have numerical values to be very precise as to the values that you paint. The same thing applies for other tools. So if I want to paint granulation here, I just click on the granulation and now I'm painting the granulation on the object. The same thing, of course, for edges, but these will only appear on the edges of the object. So if I darken the edge here, you're seeing that pigment is concentrating in this shoulder of the character and so forth. So if I want to pay some gaps here, I'm going to make my brush smaller. By the way, to make brushes smaller and bigger, you keep B pressed on the keyboard and then you click and drag with a left mouse click to make it smaller or bigger. So I'm going to go smaller here and then I'm going to paint a, a gap there. And that's pretty much how this works in a nutshell. Now we want to go deeper into this. So if you don't want to paint, but rather flood values or reset values. So for example, I don't, I don't really like this gap here, so I'm going to reset it. So this is gone. But if I want to, let's say, select some vertices and then say, I want to flood the density a few times with a value of 10, then I click flood. And this is just adding 10 to the selected vertices. Nothing else is going to be affected by it. And by doing this, you can have very fine control. So for example, we can have this selection of vertices that let me convert them to faces. So you can have this selection of faces here and I'm going to go in steps of 15 and I'm going to accumulate the pigment turbulence. So if I go flood once, then I can reduce the selection with a smaller than, then I can go ahead and flood again, flood again, flood again. So that's pretty much how you can really control things on a, on a much local level. So if I were to just want to paint on this, I can also go accumulation and just paint on the selected vertices. In this case, we need to convert these to vertices. So once we have these two vertices, we can just paint on the selected objects, as you can see here, or I can want to dilute this. This needs to be a bit bigger, minus 30, that you can see better what the effect is doing. So you can really select parts of the object and only paint on those. So if I only want to paint on the hand, I can come here and paint dilution on it. Now, so we've explained what accumulation does, what basically these togglers do, what the slider here does, what the numeric value here means, what reset and flood is. But what about these little buttons here? Well, these ones are useful to key the painted effects. In this case here, this model, unfortunately, doesn't really have any construction history, which makes it uh, impossible for us to key painted effects. As you can see, there's type error, non-type object is not iterable. In order to bring the construction history back and be able to key the noise effects in case you don't have any construction history anymore, you can go here and simply export the paint effects and the materials. I'm going to export it in desktop. I have a file here called Wisbiz paint effects.json. I'm just going to override that. And once I have that, I can go and delete the paint effects. We don't need this. And we're going to add some history to that. The easiest way to add history in Maya is by going to edit mesh and click on transform. This will automatically add construction history here. And once we import the paint effects again, once we open that up, you're going to see that we have the polycolor per vertex history. And these are exactly the nodes that are going to allow us to key 
the painted effects. So if I'm going to come here and I grow my selection with a bigger than button, once I have this selection here, if I go to frame zero and I say I want to key the pigment turbulence effect, I just press on key and you're going to see a little key appear here. So I want to keep these values at this frame. Once I'm at frame five, I want to dilute this thing a bit and just showcasing how this effect exactly works. Once I go there and I create another key, then you're going to see that automatically you have animated these vertices and the effect basically on these vertices. And the same works for all the other effects. Just keep in mind that in order for this to work, you need to have these polycolor per vertex nodes in your construction history. And that's it pretty much. So with this one, you create keys. With this one, you show the keys in the timeline. So if I select this object, you won't see any keys in the timeline. As soon as I press this one, then I see the keys in the timeline of this object. And this one removes the keys. So if I don't want the keys at five, I just remove them. Now, something that's very important is keep in mind though that when keying vertices, select only as many as necessary because they add a lot of animation curves, basically one animation curve per vertex face, which is something a bit too technical, but basically every face that shares that vertex is going to have an animation curve per vertex. So that can quickly escalate. So keep the animation of paint effects to a minimum only when necessary and just use this as much as you can. If you really need to animate paint effects, make sure to also use proxies, which are going to be introduced in another video. That's it. See you guys and have fun.